Ever since the dawn of the motor car in the late 19th century, manufacturers have sought for ways to publicize the merits of their products over the others. Direct competition has always worked with racing and rallying proving to be the most popular. With this in mind, in the early 1980s, Mercedes-Benz, in a quest for rally superiority, designed a whole new rally car armed with its Cosworth Engineering four-cylinder, 2.3-litre, twin-overhead cam, 16-valve motor. It was to be called the 190E 2.3-16. And Mercedes-Benz would have to build some 500 of these cars to legitimize it for competition. Well, of course, that was what homologation was all about. Sadly, when it was realized that the 190E wouldn't stand much of a chance against the new Audi Quattro four-wheel drive rally cars, Mercedes-Benz had to think again. So the decision was taken to abandon rallies in favor of track racing, targeting in particular the German Touring Car Championship, also known as the DTM. The Cosworth Mercedes certainly established the brand as a force to be reckoned with in touring car racing. But BMW responded with their own homologation special, the M3. If Munich versus Stuttgart on a football field was some game, then on a racetrack, it was way better. The 190E 2.5 16 Evo 2 is the spectacular car that they came up with. But, and make no mistake about it, these Evo 2 cars are a total joy to drive. They've got a really fine-tuned hydro pneumatic suspension and, great feature, a three-position height adjustment that's all set up by this little button on the left of me here. Well, obviously, when you're on a racetrack, you have it as low as you can get it, but if you want to go over some bumpy terrain and not clout your air dam on the front, you can bring it up on the button. Nice feature. And the brakes. Ah. Nothing wrong with those. Pull you up in a straight line, definitely man enough for the job. Its looks may be an acquired taste, but the Evo 2 meant business. Just look at this rear wing, for instance. Looked like something out of the future at the time, but Mercedes had to try everything possible if they were going to stand a chance against the M3. Under here, is an improved 2.5 litre version of Cosworth's Mercedes engine, giving some 235 horsepower in street trim and over 350 horsepower in the racers. If Mercedes had struggled against BMW, Audi and Ford in the DTM, it all came right in 1972 when Klaus Ludwig won the DTM title for them outright in an Evo 2. But this car on the racetrack didn't just win, it set records. Ellen Lur in 1992 won outright at the Hockenheim Ring, beating Keke Rosberg, remaining the only woman to date to have won a DTM race. Cars like this are obviously at their best when you're really using all you've got revving the engine, using the power, using the speed. I guess it's then that it's somewhat outrageous looks come into their own. Because you do need that dam on the front to hold your nose down, and you do need a bit of wing at the back to keep download on the rear wheels so you can get all your power down when you're chucking it round a corner. What is so nice about these homologation cars is that whilst they were built in quantity purely 
to get themselves legitimized for racing, they do make the most wonderful road cars as well. I can see why they're so popular. People sometimes ask me what I think might make a great iconic car of the future, <laughs> as if I'd know. But this car has already achieved that status, there's no doubt about that. And I suppose it's a reasonable bet that any other purpose-built car in the same category could well qualify to become a future icon. But they have to go some to do much better than this. You know, driving this machine around and thinking about that engine in there reminds me of a great story. In 1914, Mercedes won the French Grand Prix. Well, it was the only Grand Prix at the time anyway. And to celebrate, they sent the winning car to their showrooms in Mayfair in England. Well, World War I breaks out. And so the Ministry of Defense sequester the car, send it to Rolls-Royce. They take it to pieces to see if they can learn anything. What do they discover? four valves per cylinder, overhead camshaft. And from there on, every aviation engine built by Rolls-Royce had four valves per cylinder, overhead cam, right up to and including the Merlin engine that was used in Spitfires and Hurricanes. So, strange old world, isn't it, that over 65 years after that Grand Prix, Mercedes come back to the Brits to get advice on how to make their engine more powerful and it gets a 16-valve head and overhead cams. But in any case, here we have a definite and wonderful homologation special. And I see the, uh, yeah, the custodian of the car hasn't shown up yet, so I think I'll grab a quick ride in it before he shows. Strange world, isn't it? <laughs>